Thanks for stopping by to check out this episode of Vintage Audio Review. In this episode, I'm going to talk about an AV listening test that was performed on two different speaker cables. One of them was the transparent audio reference model speaker cable, and the other was a homemade cable that I made this guy right here. I'll go into a little bit more detail about that in a little bit, but kind of how this came about was that my buddy Ian managed to get a pair of transparent audio reference cables that were 10 feet long and these guys run between eight and nine thousand dollars a pair if you go on to their website right now for an eight foot one i think they sell for nine grand a pair now the version that we have are 10 foot long and one end has uh, the locking banana kind of jacks on them and the other has spade lugs. So those may run the price up more, but they're also used. So I'm figuring that the transparent cables were at least eight grand a pair. The cable I made here, which is also 10 foot long, cost about $14. Now this test was done using one loudspeaker and that was an Usher Compass loudspeaker. And you'll kind of see the little setup that we used it was done at a friend's house, uh, my friend Richard's house in one of his rooms, and it was set up so that you could switch between both cables. Now, both cables are routed through this audio switcher, and this guy has a write-up that I did on it as far as its electrical properties and what kind of effects it adds, and I will post a link to that write-up. Uh, on the ASR website is where I posted it, but I'll post that in the description below if you're interested in, in learning more about the switch box. Also, the preamp that was used was my Carver C1. I used a Jolita JD601 CD player, and there were 16 tracks on the CD that people could switch between to see if one kind of music sounded different on the cables. You can switch um, between either cable. You don't know which cable you're switching between. So all you knew is that you were switching between cables B or C. You did not know which cable was what. The test was done in mono with just the single Usher Compass loudspeaker. And in order to do this test, I had to build another cable. This cable is a two foot long cable. It's basically two 12 gauge wires in parallel and this plugged into the output of this, which went to the Usher speaker. So both cables went through this little section of 12 gauge wire that was in parallel. So it was very, very thick wire and should have no effect on the end results. Both cables, like I said, were 10 foot long. And you'll see a little bit more about the cables. I apologize, the, the quality of the video of the cables wasn't as detailed, but it kind of gives you an idea of the cables. So the Carver C1 has a stereo mono switch. It was set for mono so that both channels coming out of the preamplifier would be the same. And that went into the Bryson 2B-LP, which is basically two mono blocks amplifiers in one nice thin movable package. And that went to the switch box, which then went to the Usher Compass speaker. And there was about 10 or 11 of us, uh, I think one, um, one pair of guys grouped up together and kind of did the, the questionnaire, uh, one questionnaire between them. These were audiophile people from Phoenix as well as from Tucson. Ages range from maybe 35 to uh, 75. I think the 75 year old did it with a younger, uh, with a younger gentleman too. So they kind of went through it and rated it together. Um, I'll discuss the results of the listening test. Like I said, nobody knew what cable they were listening to. And while this is not a end-all test, it was fun to do um, to get together and see if you could hear a difference between such an expensive speaker cable versus one that was homemade by, by me. So anyway, let me show you the cables and then I'll show you a little uh, of the data that I measured. I basically just measured the frequency responses of the cable I made versus the transparent audio cable, as well as the THD. If I owned a very low resistance ohmmeter, I would have measured the ohms of them, but I did not. I just looked at frequency response and 
distortion they may have added to the system, if at all. So let's look at the cables and then I'll come back and go over the results and we'll go from there. This is the transparent audio a reference speaker cable. In September of 2023, an eight foot pair of these with spade lugs on both ends sells for around $9,000 a pair. This particular version, which is several years old, has the spade lugs on one end and it has the locking bananas on the other end. It is the low Z version and I'll show you where that is indicated on the cables. This locking banana is kind of cool. It allows you to turn this little section right here. And then the banana portion expands out so it allows you for a very good secure connection of your banana plug to jack. Here is the bottom side of what I'm going to call the junction block part of the cable. It has a serial number and maybe a model number, I'm not really sure. And it does have feet that do come off, these do unscrew, they are a hard plastic foot. Transparent Audio has a low Z or high Z option for the speaker cable assembly. This particular one is low Z for low output impedance amplifiers. I didn't really see what they designated was a low Z or high Z output amplifier to match these, but this does say low Z. It has a couple of arrows pointing towards the spade lugs, and you can get other kind of connectors other than spade lugs, but that would be the end that goes to the amplifier, and that is indeed how this was connected for the AB test. Here is the cable that I put together to challenge, if you may, the transparent audio reference speaker cable. And this is also 10 feet long, and it uses 10 gauge Bulls Audio oxygen free copper speaker wire, and that sells for $11 for 25 feet. So we'll just call it $6 worth of. 10 gauge wire to make this cable and, and then I use these banana jacks and you can kind of see a little bit different view of them here and the way the cable is made is that you insert the end of the speaker wire into this little area here and then there's a little screw that you tighten down to snug fit it. Now I tin my leads before I put them in. It gives a better connection I believe. And so that is how the cables are assembled and then you would slip that over it. So that is the speaker wire that is used. And these guys right here, uh, I doubt they cost more than $2 each. I uh, got them from my buddy Ian to help with this little demo that we're doing. So I'm guessing they're maybe $2 each. So if you add um, $8 for the connectors and maybe $6 for the wire, you're at $14 for a speaker cable that's 10 foot long versus a $9,000 a pair of speaker cable. So anyway, that's kind of where we're at with the speaker wires that were used. In order to be able to do an AV test between the two speaker cables, you needed a third cable that connects between the output of the AV test box to the speaker that was used for the listening. Now, I ended up putting together my own speaker cable. This is only 24 inches long, each cable, one is the plus and one is the minus, and they are made of two 12 gauge wires that are in parallel and soldered together. So all the connections at the banana connectors and at the spade lug connectors, everything is all soldered together in this case, and those are two 12 gauge, they actually look more like 10 gauge wires that are connected together in parallel so the effect that this wire cable assembly has should be very minimal and it is the same whether you're listening to the transparent reference cable or the homemade cable that I made. This is a frequency response plot of my setup and it is from 10 hertz to 40 kilohertz. The right channel, the one in red, is going to be used as a reference and the left channel will be the one where I insert the speaker cable under test into. Now I have a marker placed at 30 kilohertz and you can see 
we're kind of on an expanded scale that there's only 0.04 dB between the two uh, cable uh, path losses. And so what I'm going to do is insert in the speaker wire that I made, which would be the 10 gauge speaker wire, and we'll see what happens to the frequency response. I've added my 10 gauge and 10 feet of speaker wire that I made myself, and there really is no difference at all on the uh, left channel, which is the one that got the speaker wire inserted into it. And you can see we're still at uh, 0.04 dB here at 30 kilohertz, and nothing really changed. So the speaker wire that I made had no effect on the frequency response. I've now hooked up the 10 foot transparent reference speaker wire to the system and there's really no difference in the shape of the frequency response and it's down 0.05 dB whereas the wire I built was 0.04 dB but that's kind of just measurement error. So basically no change at all over the 10 Hertz to 40 kilohertz range. Here we have plot showing the THD SNR for both the homemade cable, which would be on the left, versus the transparent audio cable, which would be on the right. And the frequency span is 10 hertz to 50 kilohertz. There really is no difference between the two cables. I'm not going to complain that the transparent audio cable is 0.08 dB higher than the homemade cable, or the THD is 0.000. 0.01% better for the transparent audio cable and the THD post noise are pretty much the same. So there really isn't any difference between the two cables, at least as far as the contribution of uh, THD or SNR. I should point out this was done with a 2 volt signal going into the cables and this does include the effect of the AV switch box and adapters as well. This is the second AV listening test that I have done a video for. The other one we did a AV test between the Bryson 2B-LP solid state amp versus a pair of Macintosh MacKit 30 tube amps. So that is a video that is on my channel if you care to uh, listen to it. Uh, some of the same people that participated in that um, participated in this little research experiment, <laughs> listening test, get together. I think we had pizza and beer and water and soda and some uh, cookies and we had a bunch of food. So it's a nice get together for um, just audio people to, uh, to see some of the gear that Richard has, which is quite a collection, as well as do this test in its own little room and have some fun doing it. And then we'll get to the results in just a second. But I will say that at least two of the, the people, the younger people, they have better hearing, I would think. Uh, they're musicians. One of them is a speaker designer and has uh, really good ears for that. And so I was really curious to get some people with uh, maybe more sensitive ears in this grouping, not just older guys my own age or a little bit older, or a little bit younger. So there was a variety of people. I didn't say this before, but we're all guys that were at this event. Our one female audiophile was ill and couldn't make it. So maybe next time she'll be able to make it. So there was an evaluation sheet, which everybody was asked to fill out. And I'll just uh, start with the first question and tell you what the results were. Uh, first question, whose bass low frequency response did you prefer more? Cable B, cable C, or about the same? Three voted for cable B, two for cable B, and about the same four. Whose mid-range vocals did you prefer more? One for B, six for C, and three about the same. Whose high frequency response did you prefer more? One for B, four for C, and four for about the same. And lastly, which cable did you prefer more? One for B, four for C, and four about the same. So basically, a lot of the results show they're about the same. If there was a striking difference, I would expect, you know, more of them to fall under B or C. Basically, for most people, they were about the same. The C speaker cable actually had about uh, the same amount of results as about the same. So it's kind of split. Now, I'm going to tell you which was the expensive cable, and that was B. 
the cable that I made, cable C, the $14 cable actually uh, did quite well in this comparison. So I'm not going to say that you shouldn't spend a lot of money on speaker cables. That's kind of your own thing. If you want to spend a lot of money on a Rolex, go right ahead. That's your thing. But um, I would say that there's not a lot of difference in the sound between these cables and definitely the cheaper cables. And, and this is actually the, the Bulls Audio, B-U-L-Z-Z -Z Audio that I bought. It's, I think, 25 feet for $11 on Amazon. Oxygen-free copper 10 gauge. Very easy to use, much easier to move around than the transparent audio. Now the transparent audio kind of looks cool, but you know, if you want to you know, go for that look and you have uh, you know, $100,000 speaker system and you want to say you have $8,000 speaker cables, well, do what you want. But if you're going to tell me that they sound a lot different, I'm probably going to say, well, let's, let's A-B them. <laughs> Not according to my A-B test. And you can say, oh, maybe the Carver C1 doesn't have the transparency. Or maybe the little cable that I made that was two foot long caused some effect. Yeah, you can say all that. But 10 foot of each cable, very little difference in sound. So there we go. That's kind of my take on this A-B speaker test. I would very much like to hear your comments. I'm sure there will be some. Like I said, it's not the end all uh, the test results, there was like 10. I don't think I have my vote in there, but um, I would have said they sound about the same because when I did it, I didn't really hear any difference. So there you go. Much easier and less expensive to use those Bulls Audio cables than those uh, great big things with the spade lugs and hard to move along and bend and stuff. So the, my choice would be the ones that I made and I'm not going into the speaker cable making business. Uh, no chance. Anyway, would love to hear your comments in the description. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. If you like the video, like everybody says, click the like button. And until next time, have a great day or night.